we now present Raft, an algorithm for replicated log, and we focus on the consensus part of this algorithm. So the Raft consensus algorithm. Our presentation here will be based on a presentations by the designers of Raft, and specifically the slides on designing for understandability the Raft consensus algorithm. We will also provide the Raft paper as a reading in this course. So the designers of Raft are Diego Hongaro and John Osterhout. Osterhout is a professor at Stanford. So some of the slides are borrowed from this presentation. But our presentation is a bit different because it's going to relate to our knowledge on sequence Paxos. So we start first with terminology. And so that you understand Raft uses another terminology than in sequence Paxos. And here we are going to give you the correspondence. So in sequence Paxos, when we talk about the accepted sequence, PA, Raft will talk about the log. And when we talk about the decided sequence, then Raft talks about the committed prefix of the log. In sequence Paxos, when we talk about a round or ballot number, specifically think of ballot arrays with rounds, they use the word term. So they have different terms instead of different rounds. When we talk about a process, they talk about a server. And when we in sequence Paxos talk about the promise, the round number, the highest round number that is promised, or the round number of the leader, they are talking about the highest term. And when we talk about an element in a sequence, they talk about an entry and its index, the index of the entry. These are the difference in terminology. We are going to use rough terminology, but from time to time relate to the sequence paxos. Raft has a different structure than the algorithm that we presented on sequence paxos. So in sequence paxos, we had a sequence paxos algorithm that uses a leader election abstraction. In Raft, these two, the consensus part and the leader election are fused together. The leader election does more than what we have done before. So let us see now what the leader election does. The leader election, it selects one server to act as a leader, exactly as our ballot leader election. It also detects crashes and chooses a new leader as our ballot leader election, but then it does things differently. It has one more restriction on which server should be a leader. Roughly speaking, it says that only server with up-to-date logs can become a leader. Of course, we have to understand what it means to be up-to-date logs, but we understand this from the prepare phase of sequence Paxos. So after a prepare phase, the leader has an up-to-date log, and that's exactly what they mean in the Raft algorithm. So the leader election and Raft consensus then are fused in one component. And that component, if we just look to the leader election part of it, it incorporates the prepare phase in the leader election algorithm. And how it does that? The leader election guarantees that a leader with the highest term, it means a highest round number, as you understand, and the highest entry index, which means it is the longest sequence, is elected. So this part was done before in the prepare phase of sequence practice. This means that when a node becomes a leader, its log is up to date. And then a leader moves to what we call normal operation. In this case, the leader accepts command from clients and abandons it to its log. The leader replicates its log to other servers. And this is not as it sounds. It is more complicated because 
the log of the leader and the log of the other servers might be inconsistent. So it has to overwrite inconsistency and we are going to see exactly how this is done. And also tries then to keep the logs consistent, the logs across the followers and uh, itself, of course. So consistent replication is done differently from sequence paxos by some form of log reconciliation. Log rec and we are going to see the algorithm for that. Another aspect of Raft, which is different from the way we presented sequence paxos, is that it uses RPCs, remote procedure call. So basically, a remote procedure call is a pattern of request reply messages. You request something and you expect a reply. Raft always uses the request reply pattern for sending messages. So that is an RPC. Server in Raft has the following states. So a server can be a follower, it can be a candidate, and it can be a leader. So let us see. Every server starts as a follower. And when it is a follower, it is passive, but it expects regular heartbeats from other nodes. And basically the heartbeats will come from leaders or wannabe leaders. And if it does not get a heartbeat from what it knows is a leader, it becomes a candidate. So once, say, a leader crashes, every follower becomes a candidate. And each of these issues what is called a request vote, RPC. So that's, again, a request reply to get elected as a leader. So many candidates can start to compete to get elected as a leader. And we are going to see this little bit in more detail later. Eventually, one should win. And the winner is very special, as we will see. The winner will be a node with the highest term and the highest entry index, which in Paxos terminology, the winner will be the one that has the longest sequence with the longest accepted round number. Now, in case you are a leader, but receiving heartbeat, you discover a higher term, means that somebody else became a leader with a higher term, higher round number, you go back to become a follower. The same thing happens for a candidate server. If he discovers, when he's doing heartbeats, that somebody have a higher term, it goes to become a follower. This information about the term that everybody thinks it is the highest is always propagated in every RPC in this system, in every message. So let us now look to the notion of terms, that what they call terms, which is rounds in our case. So a term starts by an election process. So here, term one, one process starts getting elected. This process then accepts command and extends its commands. So say to become a sequence, I call the sequence A until it loses leadership. There are many reasons to lose leadership. It could be slow, other processes could think they are a better leader and so on, or it has crashed, of course. Then we start a next term with a new leader election. And now the leader again is going to extend the previous sequence, but it extended in term two or in round two. This will be extended by another sequence B. And again, this leader ends, another leader comes in, and again the sequence is extended by another sequence in term C. The leader dies here, and we get into term 4. Many nodes try to become leaders, but they fail. The reason that they fail is that when a server is a candidate and wants to become a leader, it tries to collect a majority of votes, and if it fails, then it fails in that term. And many could compete with each other, and nobody of these get a majority. And that's why this is called vote split. In this case, this term has not elected any leader, and we move to a next term with a higher round. So this picture describes how the system evolves. 
So one more time, we have at most one leader per term. Some terms might fail to elect a leader, as we can see here. Each server maintains its current term. So it maintains its current term. If you remember, this is compared to maintaining the promise, the end promise, the round number of promise. And it is exchanged in every RPC. If a server discovers another server that has higher term, it means that it should update its term and the leader reverse to become a follower. If an incoming RPC has a lower term, you reply with error. This means that some messages are slow to arrive, so they arrived to a server after an arbitrary delay, and that server have already moved to a higher term. So this gives you an idea about this notion of terms in Raft. Let us compare terms around with our ballot arrays that we des described earlier in the course. A term corresponds to a round number. So we have round number zero, but here we start from round number one. So in round number one, a sequence A has been accepted by our pr processes, and there is a majority, so this sequence is chosen. So this corresponds to this A. When we start a new term, it means that we start a new round. We get a new leader. The leader extends the sequence A. So here is the extension of the sequence A. Assume this is the leader. It has propagated the sequence to another server. So at this point, a sequence A followed by B is chosen. There's a majority for it. And that corresponds to this now B is chosen and closed. After that, a new leader comes in and again extend the sequence with C. And now the chosen sequence is this, which corresponds now to all of these. In the next term or round, nobody has been elected, so nothing happened there. But in the fifth term, now the sequence is extended again with D. So what we have now is the sequence. At this point, I assume that this term is still open. So the longest sequence chosen is still A, B, C, because D did not yet propagate to other servers. So this gives you a good intuition and an understanding the relation between ballot arrays and terms and the log.